they uh, built a prototype instrument that uh, was basically, it had a little, essentially like an Edison cylinder with concentric rings, concentric sound grooves on it, each one being a recording of a different note of an organ. And each key on the keyboard had a corresponding stylus that would drop into this corresponding groove and it would just spin and it would loop. So essentially like kind of like the Mellotron except uh, it looped and it played actually a needle in a groove instead of a tape running across a tape head. And uh, so they had a prototype of that and it worked horribly. It didn't work at all basically. So they started, long story short, they started looking around at other technologies and they realized, hey, film soundtrack. So they developed these discs which um, each disc, it's hard it's hard for you to see from a distance, but each disc has 57 concentric rings of film soundtrack. So if you've ever seen Fantasia and they have the little demonstration of the film soundtrack where they introduce the film soundtrack and the squiggly lines and everything, that's what this is, except instead of running vertically along a strip of film, uh, you've got film soundtracks laid out in concentric loops. Um, and so I'll quit talking and I'll play something on one of these discs. What you have on an Optigan, since you can't really see here, is uh, on this side I've got, this has been essentially set up like a home organ, uh, a chord organ. On this side I've got a series of chord buttons. And over here is just, you know, a regular organ keyboard. So this is the... Uh, bluegrass banjo disc and uh, what you've got over here is like bluegrass banjo riffs and drums and stuff and over here is just an organ sound so Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how it comes across there. Um, there's a couple of distinct differences between an Optigan and a Mellotron. First of all, the sound quality is much, much less, much more degraded. It's a much lower fi instrument. Uh, just, and that's just basically the technology of you know the optical soundtrack and you know the playback head. Um, it's just very grainy and lo-fi sounding, but that's why we love it. It has this very sort of haunting quality to it. Um, uh, the other thing is that the sounds loop. So Ryan showed you that on, an, on a Mellotron, you hit a key and eight seconds later the note stops. Well, on an Optigan... <laughs> You hear that little glitch, that's where the sound is looping. Um, so that's a plus, but the minus, the, the caveat with that is that uh, an Optigan doesn't have attack transients for its sound. So on the Mellotron, when you hit a key, if it's a violin sound, you get a little bow scrape at the beginning, you know, and it sounds more natural. Well, you don't have that on the Optigan because when the disc spins around, it's constantly spinning. When I hit a key, it doesn't cue the disc up to a particular spot and start playing. It just turns on that particular soundtrack wherever it happens to be. So if it's a drum loop, um, there's a little flashing metronome which shows you, I don't know if you can see, there's a red 
mark here and then four white marks. Well, the red mark marks the downbeat, and there's a little optical metronome that flashes red every fourth beat. So if you want to start on the beat, you have to wait for the little red flash to come around. Um, uh, but otherwise, uh, the, the sounds are just constantly spinning, and it's impossible to play out of time with the chord buttons because they're hard synced to a, each other. They can't play out of sync with each other because they're hard synced. The first 20 soundtracks on the outside are the chord, chord patterns, and then the next 37 are each individual note on the keyboard. So I'll put in another disc. Oh, and uh, basically new discs for the for the Optigan, which was you know again marketed to uh, you know grandmas and people that wanted to have sing-alongs at home. It was kind of like sort of karaoke for the early '70s. Um, it was an easy way to play music and have a sing-along or whatever. Um, and again, it was made by Mattel, which means that it was fairly cheap. You know, you only had to pay like four hundred dollars for one of these versus whatever a Mellotron cost back then. Um, but in order to change the sounds, you just buy a new disc. And so they came in like record albums like this. And they made 40 different discs. This one's called Rollin' Easy. And actually, the woman on the cover of this disc just passed away recently. I got an email from her nephew um, letting me know that. And yeah, amazing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you get them at like Sears and JCPenney and places like that, or like organ stores, that sort of thing. Did anyone ever use, use one of these? Sort of like an archetypal, you know, rib? Did anybody ever use one of these in a, in a hip, credible way? No. <laughs> uh, Actually, yeah, see, that's the thing, you know, it's like Brian ripped out all of these, like, classic riffs and things. There are no classic riffs that were ever played on an Optigan. But that's sort of changing because, you know, this instrument, like, you know, all sort of, all things like this has become kind of hip and retro and all this stuff. And actually, these days, you hear, I'll play for you in a second, you hear... Uh, this instrument uh, uh, in a lot of uh, commercials these days. Uh, if you know what you're listening for, you'll hear this. What's the most recent one, Robert? The AT&T commercial? Yeah, well, there's lots of commercials. If you know what you're listening for, you hear this instrument in a lot of, in a lot of commercials because it's a quick way to get sort of an organic, weird sound in the background. Um, Oh, well, okay, so here's a disc called Singing Rhythm, which has people singing on it. Wait. <laughs> I'm getting a little crosstalk here. Okay, so one thing that all the kids that were fortunate to have one of these in the early 70s figured out probably within five minutes of owning the instrument is that this is the top side of the disc, this is the bottom side of the disc. What happens when you put it in upside down? Everybody knows. So. <laughs> And you can, you know, change the sound more by uh, moving the tempo knob. It's actually called the tempo knob, but again, what happens when you move it? So it slows the tempo down, but it also slows the pitch down.
I'll play one more disc for you here on the Optigan. Uh, this is a disc called Swing It, which uh, I'm pulling out mostly because, uh, again, there was a commercial on TV that featured this disc pretty heavily, and I got a million emails from people going, what is that, what is that? It's like, well, it's an Optigon. And there's a big debate about you know, people that didn't know what it was, that thought it was some old record or something, and they wanted to know what it was. What's going on? This is not my Optigan, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the disc kind of gets aligned in there wrong, and you get... Okay. I'm not playing anything with my right hand is because I don't really know how to play that very much, that well so all right I think I'm gonna move on to the next thing here uh, so Mattel actually this this instrument was a dismal failure for Mattel because uh, it was built to sort of toy manufacturer specs which meant that it was like sort of a professional musical instrument, but not really. It was kind of a toy, but too expensive to be a toy. And ultimately, it was just the technology was very unreliable. The build quality was very unreliable, and they were pretty much breaking down, you know, as soon as people got them home from the store. So they eventually sold it off, and it kind of died a slow death. 